Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of 10 Minute Tips with me, Michael Hoffman from the OSINT Curious Project. I'm going to show you in this episode how to use breach data. Now before we get in there and actually start using it, we have to put a little caveat here to see if you are allowed to use it. There are some companies, government organizations, and clients that don't want you to use breach data in your OSINT. The reason is, is that this breach data is stolen data. It's illegally obtained data that has been stolen from some website and released to the internet for other people to collect and search. Your customer may not allow you to search this, especially if you, the information that you're gathering might be used in court proceedings or something. Using illegally obtained data, even in a public forum, might um, might mess up the investigation or the overall case. So please check to make sure that you're allowed to do these techniques before going ahead and doing them. Now, if you are able to do it, let's pop over to Justin Nordine, my buddy's uh, website here, OSINTframework.com, and in email address, breach data, we see we've got a bunch of different websites. We're going to cover just a couple of these, and I'm going to show you some neat techniques that we can use to find information. Now, the first is probably one that you've heard of. This is Have I Been Pwned. It's a site that's run by Troy Hunt over in Australia great site whenever there's a breach that's out there on um, data that's been released he grabs a copy of it strips off the passwords and then takes the email addresses and put assigns them and attaches them to a certain breach for instance if we wanted to search for my buddy john at example.com we can find out that oh no he his data was found in 51 breach sites and 28 paste bin pastes and if we scroll down we can see the names and categories and a little description of each of these different uh, leaked information, breach data that's out there. For instance, in the Adobe breach of 2013, uh, email addresses, password hints, passwords, and usernames were released. Now, we don't get access to that information here in Have I Been Pwned. This service just tells you your information was there. You should be aware of this. There's even things that you can do to monitor your email, for instance, if I John at example.com is my email, I can go ahead and have it notify me if in the future any breaches are found with my email in them. So that's kind of helpful. But if you're interested in finding other information about the accounts, we need to go somewhere else. Now I'm going to go to a site called Dehashed, and Dehashed is an example of site that allows you to search breach data. We're going to do a couple of different types of searches here. Now, I'm not saying that you have to sign up for dehash.com. It is an inexpensive service, I think like $3 a week for unlimited access. Um, it's, it's pretty good, but it, again, there's other ones out there that you might find more useful. Let's go ahead and type in john at example.com in here and see what we come up with. Now, we see that there's a whole bunch of results found and we see here's John at example.com in the exploit IN dump. And when we click on that, we see over here, this is the email and that's the password. And if we switch to another page, let's go a little deeper here, because I know that a lot of these are just passwords of John. Um, let's go over here to the Turk.com one. Look at that. So we click here in Turk.com. Somebody used John at example.com with the password 963-852-741, which is just keyboard walking every two keys, 963-841 and um, 852-741. So that's it. We can now take that password and if whoever signed up for this account use that same password and same email on Twitter, Instagram, other sites, we now can log in as them. Now that's how attackers think and that's what they do. They collect this dump data, this breach data, and then just reuse that password. We can do some other interesting things from an OSINT perspective here. Let's say that somebody's using a password of, oh, I don't know, password, password, yeah, password, password, one, two, three. If somebody's using a password of password, password, one, two, three, we can go ahead and search the breach data and find out the email addresses of those people. Now, the reason why we want this is, well, maybe your target has used a really 
unique password to them across multiple sites. They used that same email and that same password on match.com and Instagram and this site and that site. And then those sites happen to get compromised. What we can do is if you have that password, we can now search for those other locations that have, might, might have other related information on them or other uh, email addresses. For instance, let's take a look at this one. Barack at whitehouse.gov. This is an email of Barack at whitehouse.gov. It was found in Dropbox dump. And here we see that there's a hash of that password. We didn't even get a cracked password in drop, Dropbox dump. But what we can do is copy that hash and say, hey, where else have we seen that hash? And now we can see that that hash was also found in CRR Mercer and Barack and this weird set of random characters in Micro Movie. We've gone ahead and taken this unique hash for whatever it is, whatever the password is, and we've now found other email addresses that also have this same hash. And there could be a relationship there. Maybe somebody at, uh, and somebody created this account, crrmercer at gmail.com on Dropbox. Then they uploaded a bunch of files and ran into that two gig limit. So they're like, crud, well, I'm going to go ahead and create another account, uh, barack at whitehouse.gov. And then I'm going to use my same password there and upload more information. Then, you know, when I reach that limit, I create another account, another account, and they're all tied together with the password hash. Now, that's kind of cool, I think, tying accounts together with the password hash or with the password itself. But we can go further in some of these sites. For instance, let's look at, uh, this is, this is Google Translate, and we're translating the password password string into Cyrillic. This is uh, Russian. We're going to copy that because sometimes dumps have non-English characters. Searching for password password in Cyrillic brings us up with these emails. Look at this. Whatever at yandex.ru, something at mail.ru, mail.ru. Yeah, so these dumps here, which are ending in Russian or .ru top level domains, have that password. And that can be really, really helpful. So just keep in mind that we might need to translate the words that we're using or the phrases that somebody might be using into other character sets. That's about all the time I have to talk to you about password breaches. Um, I've been Micah Hoffman. Thanks for your time. Stay Osin Curious.